I'm in Inglewood, living off Arbavita. I'm on government assistance, and I run out of money, and I had to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my hand on Jelani's stomach, and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me was I was willing, and I don't know if this is going to sound crazy, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. When you feel like you don't know yourself anymore. It's a, it's a place of sheer ambiguity. It's a place of uncertainty. I know that personally. Because I remember right out of a relationship where I was to get married. And the relationship had turned emotionally and then physically abusive. At the end of that relationship, I, I sought to discover me again. I didn't see myself initially. I had lost myself in becoming his fiance and becoming Jelani's mom, the community advocate, and then this abuse survivor. I lost Lisa. I was diagnosed as clinically depressed. I was prescribed Prozac. I remember looking at the paper and seeing Prozac and Lisa Nichols on the same piece of paper. I had lost myself. I lost myself in all the titles. I lost myself in all the labels. I lost myself in all the duties of being me, of serving everyone else. No one took myself from me. And that was sobering. So I figured if I gave myself away, it's time to go get myself back. And I wanna share with you what I did. And I want to invite you that if you feel like you've lost a little bit of you or you want to regain that part of you that you think you might have relinquished for obligation, title, and service, to go get you again. To go get you again. The first thing I recommend you do is my favorite, the mirror exercise. Get in the mirror and complete three different sentences. And I want you to complete these three di different sentences with seven different endings. So every sentence has seven different endings. Look at yourself in the mirror as if you were your best friend. No judgment. This is before you're leaving to go out of the house, so no makeup on, no tie on, just the natural you. And I want you to look yourself directly in the eye and say your name. And the first sentence is, I'm proud that you. So you would look at yourself and say, Lisa, I'm proud that you. And I want you to go back 10 years and celebrate some things. And then I want you to come up current and celebrate some things. And your tone is as if you were talking to your best friend. The second sentence, this one might gut punch you a bit. I'm gonna be quite honest. The second sentence is, say your name first. I forgive you for. Lisa, I forgive you for and then seven different endings on what you forgive yourself for. So in that second sentence, what you're doing is you're cutting the shackles of shame, blame, guilt, regret, and anger with every I forgive you for. It won't happen overnight. It won't happen overnight, which is why you do it every day. You'll feel a little more back into yourself. You'll feel a little more back into your skin. You'll feel a little more back into your power as each day goes past. Maybe not for the first four days, let me be honest with you. Maybe even not for the first six days. But if you stay with it and you stay consistent, you will feel that strength. You will feel that certainty. You will feel that clarity come back to you. And the third sentence, Again, you say your name first. Lisa, I commit to you that. And you make seven different commitments to yourself. 
that before you go out of your door and you commit to other people, because you know, we're more apt to honor our commitment to other people than we are to honor our commitment to ourselves. We break our commitments to ourselves all the time, and yet when I give you my word, oh man, you can bet your last dime on that word and you will end up with 20 cents. But what happens when you begin to commit to yourself? So it's seven different commitments. Now for me, when I first did this, I was crawling. So it looked like this. Lisa, I'm proud that you got out of bed today. Lisa, I'm proud that you finally mustered up the courage to leave. Lisa, I'm proud that you sought help to hear a doctor tell you that you're really, really, really sad right now. Lisa, I forgive you. I forgive you for not using your voice. I forgive you for mistaking lonely for love. I forgive you for not, I forgive you for ignoring the warning signs when they first came up. Lisa, I commit to you that I will be a stand for you from this point forward. Lisa, I commit to you that no one will love you more than I love you. Lisa, I commit to you that I'll give you a thousand second chances to get it right. And when we get to 9.99, I'll press reset with you and we get a thousand more chances. When you do that, then slowly and surely you'll begin to one, celebrate you. Celebrate the things you've done. Your to-do list is really long, but your to-done list is always much longer. Two, you'll cut the shackles to blame, shame, guilt, regret, and anger so you're not carrying around baggage. And on the third, I commit to you that, you'll see that making commitments to you not only feel as good as making commitments to other people, but they feel better. Because when you show up for you, you serve everybody else from your overflow. So I invite you to start the journey back to you. And when you start this journey, you'll find that you won't go back to you you'll go to a whole new you and turn your crawl into a walk and your walk into a run and your run into a soul. <laughs> and when you do, I'll be there to fly beside you always.